Good morning. It is 5.50 in the morning and we are all packed up because we have to go catch a ferry from Caron Port. just got on the boat so in about 15 minutes then we're going to be pulling this home for the next five hours but one of the things that we've already noticed is that the Philippines is nuts about Christmas like we come on and there's already a gigantic lit up snowman just on the deck just as you do totally normal and yesterday, as you will have seen, the restaurant that we went to for dinner had an entire mantle of Christmas decorations. And even the restaurant that we went to for lunch had Christmas decorations up, like not as many. But yeah, we've been told also that they go nuts for Christmas here. Mid-October and already decorated. Trying to get us into the festive spirit already. Seems a bit too early, but there we go. I mean, I love Christmas, but I limit myself to like December 1st. Same. But you know what? I'm into it. That makes one of us. identical sunglasses to the ones that broke and they cost a hundred pesos which is about two dollars and fifty cents i tried to negotiate saying that my ones from the dollar store which were nearly identical had cost a dollar 25 so half the price but he was having none of it so two dollars and fifty cents for some sunglasses but at least i have eye protection and i love them come on into our room it's small but it has a lot of features that we really appreciate Number one is standard, a bed. We have some toiletries, which we do not always get, so that's nice. We have two towels, toilet paper. I think it's more of a sheet compared to a blanket. That's usually like, a, I don't love that, but you know. We have a mirror, which again, a really nice feature that we don't always have. Nick loves a desk for editing, so that's great. And the fact that it comes with a kettle and they'll provide us with coffee, Anything that's free is great. They've also given us two bottles of water, so that's amazing. There are hooks, which is great for hanging up your towel because sometimes you're looking for that, or even like a wet bathing suit. That's a nice feature. These pillows look really nice. Got a bedside table with two plugs behind here. We have some air conditioning. We have a balcony. Didn't know we were getting this. Not the most amazing view, but you know, it's always nice to have some outdoor space. Another amazing thing is this. We have a clothing hutch with some hangers. So again, super nice that we can hang up our towels, bathing suit, clothes, whatever. Keep our suitcases or bags on here because oftentimes there's not enough space to put your bags. So these small things that we've learned from touring all around that you don't think of when you don't travel a lot, but now they're like in our mind. And then the bathroom, I won't go in, but small but mighty has everything you need. It has a sink, a toilet, and a shower. Hopefully the pressure and temperature are good. Not my favorite with it being a wet room, but you know, we're budget travelers. After a quick refresh, it is now time to go grab some lunch. I 
think we're both feeling so much better after getting the fuel up. The food was really good. It is very affordable. All of this cost us 300 pesos, which is $7.50. And we didn't try anything new. Mine was just tapsula, which was the beef, egg, cucumber, and rice. And Nick got a version of it with the chorizo. But we are now going to go around town, do some research, so we can hopefully find ourselves an island hopping tour to do tomorrow. about the different island hopping tours that are available here in El Nido. And we came to, I think this is our third or fourth, it's called Soledad de Amor. And we've been talking to Amor and she's been incredibly helpful because we were initially set to do tour A, but we found out that it's like a little bit touristy and busy. And there are a lot of additional fees and you don't really get to snorkel that much. So we asked her, like, well, what's your favorite? And she said to her C, because you do get to do a lot of snorkeling. And so we are going to take her advice, and tomorrow we are going to do tour C with them. We're so excited. After a very successful stint at the hypermarket, then we've got a couple of bottles of water, some oatmeal, which is going to serve as both dinner and breakfast, I think. I mean, I did tell you in the last video, I love me some breakfast for dinner. Absolutely. And now top of that, I've just got some extra nuts for some snacks. So, yeah, pretty successful all in all. Yeah, and it cost 203 pesos for at least two meals for both of us. So just, just over five dollars. Amazing. Before we end our travel day video, we wanted to touch base on our experience talking to different tour operators in town because I think we went to about four and there's a very specific reason we went with Soledad de Amor. I mean, number one, they were super friendly, kind, and very helpful. But the first one we went to had amazing reviews. It was rated a 4.7 on Google. But the price that you see quoted on the signs, and this applies to every tour company, isn't the price that you're actually going to pay. Every single tour operator does four different tours running out of El Nido, all of which are kind of island hopping of some variety. And so you have tours A through D. And generally speaking, the most popular one is almost always tour A because that's going through a lot of lagoons and like very unique landscapes. And it's kind of where a lot of the more famous spots are. That one is also always the cheapest listed. So typically that looks to be about 1,200 pesos per person. But when you actually start to look under the shiny prices, then you actually start to realize it's a lot more than you think. So first of all, to do island hopping in the first place, then there is an environmental tax, which is an additional 200 pesos. Per person. Per person. And that applies to every single tour. Yep. But only your first tour. That is good for 10 days. Exactly. But obviously, as first timers to this island in particular, then it is something we have to take into account. The other part is that it is intended to be a full day tour, but depending on the operator you go for, lunch is not always included. Which was very strange. And the first operator we spoke to, lunch wasn't included, and that kind of got our spidey senses up because we were like, this doesn't seem right. Exactly. We've never experienced that on any other tour we've done. Yeah, it does definitely seem odd that you would run an all-day tour and then force people into a place where you literally have to pay for food. It seems a little bit odd, and why you wouldn't include that it seems a little bit weird, especially if you're reputable. 
Yeah, they were offering lunch bento boxes for anywhere between 150 and 200 pesos or 250 pesos per person. Yeah. Or you could bring your own food. Which just didn't really sound appealing on either front. No. And then on top of that, if you want to do snorkeling, then there's an additional 100 pesos per mask that you rent. If you want flippers, then that's an additional, what, 100, 200? I don't know, I didn't ask about flippers because we have water shoes. Exactly, but yeah, that's an additional cost in itself as well. And then on top of that, in order to get to the big lagoon, which is like one of the main centerpieces. On Tour A, so this is specifically about Tour A now. Yes, then there's an entrance fee. It's 200 per person to enter the big lagoon. Yes. And you can't just swim in it, you okay. have to rent a kayak. And a two-person kayak is either 300 or 350 pesos total, depending on the operator. So had we gone with the first operator that we spoke to, it would have been 4,000 pesos total. However, we did speak to, as I said, another three. All of the other three we spoke to included lunch. Yep, which was great. And the second tour operator we spoke to said if we were doing tour A, it's more of sightseeing, so she didn't even recommend getting a mask, yeah. which the first tour operator was like, yeah, rent a mask from us. And so that also made us question things because we enjoy snorkeling and we thought, so this isn't a snorkeling tour, maybe we need to consider which tour we're doing. And then we finally went into Soledad de Amor and we went over that earlier in the video about why they were so helpful and why we ended up choosing a different tour. Absolutely. But the great thing is also she is a snorkeling enthusiast, so was also able to give us full on recommendations as to the type of footwork we should be bringing and what we should expect to see when we go tomorrow as well. So all in all, a very positive experience. And she included the mask for us for free, which was very kind of her to do. It's a more expensive tour in the sense that it's 1,400 pesos per person, mm -hmm. but because you're not going to any location that requires an entrance fee, you don't have to pay that. No. We do have to pay the 200 peso environmental fee, so it brings it up to 1,600 per person. Yep. It includes lunch. We don't need water shoes. She included the mask, so 3,200 pesos total, which works out to be... 800 pesos cheaper than the first tour operator we would have gone on had we gone on tour A, first of all. But in terms of the overall cost of that, then it would be 40 Canadian dollars each. So 80 for the two of us to go on a full day of snorkeling tomorrow. Yeah, nine until four, 4.30, I think, kind exactly. of thing. Yep. But that is probably about all the energy that we have left to expend. It's already been a long one, so we're just gonna go and relax, probably do a spot of editing, and then just turn into the night. So, until next time, with our very, very exciting snorkeling tour tomorrow, take care. And keep smiling.